had kind of a lot of questions out there. So does it really allow? Almost at some point, it doesn't allow you to kind of bring all these things, things into the classroom. But as teachers, you have the power to kind of bring all these things into the classroom. You, you might adapt your material, you might change them, you might replace them to bring all these things into the classroom. Um, and to build a good relationship with the students and their families and respect students, parents, and work with them. Yesterday, we had a lot of talk about um, this issue, and in morning, we had a lot of talk about this issue as well. So, um, do you want to just share our talk with the um, persons here? Is it okay? So, um, after Khalil and Seth were talking here about the parents because they don't have this kind of um, mentality of why teaching, teaching is so important. We have to teach our students. Our parents should have to give this message to students that is teaching, learning and even learning is very important. But oftentimes parents fail. So if they don't support, how are you going to teach? Well, that's the case out there, but we have to collaborate with our parents. We know, how do we know they are better to learn? We know the background. So, Knowing that and keeping that in mind, we we'll have to go to the parents and we'll have to work with them and kind of convince them that this thing that we're learning in classroom is important. It has some kind of profit, it has some pragmatic purpose, and that will be beneficial in the long run for the course students. So we need to collaborate with you, um, the parents as well. Um, also, uh, we need to uh, engage in community work and make students engage in these kinds of activities for any sort of work that will contribute to the improvement of the community. Um, I guess in third year we have this community service practice. Yes. All right. So some people go to uh, schools and they have these libraries and they gather some clothes or you know things and then take them to the or. Um, families or students. So that makes us part of that community. So we, we're kind of taking the agency, we're taking the action to address the needs and the challenges, the differences that exist in the community. So that helps us to be part of the society. Because what we're doing is not something different. The purpose is to collaborate with the community and to touch people. That's very important. That's very important. All right. To know that, uh, to know their students, care for them, and understand students' social and cultural context. So sometimes we might blame students like, "Well, oh, these students kind of they don't do that. They don't work. They don't study." But what's that? We need to kind of talk to these, our students. Some students might have really, really hard life conditions. So I'd like to share one experience. So back in, you know. I did an um, uh, observation study with three Syrian refugee students and they had a lot of difficulties with Turkish language and they are second, third and fourth year students and they, they cannot follow the classes not, not the Turkish and not the other math, science, blah, blah blah courses so they have a lot of difficulties so I did my observation and also had interviews with the parents and I saw that in their homes, in their houses, they have a lot of difficulties they have a heating problem. So this student might see the class as a, as a place to get warm, you know? So it, it, the purpose could be different. And the teacher, I, I believe, he or she doesn't have the right to say it, but he's not studying, he's not doing that. But he has some heating out there. And I, I know he was not aware of the background, of the cultural context that student was in. Um, and to refer all students in the classroom without sh showing favorites. So sometimes we might have students who are kind of occupied with front seats, they are the best ones, and they are kind of leading the classroom, but the class, well, they don't study, they don't, they don't give importance to our class. So let's do the class and they give space to these students occupied with front seats and um, do the class in the evening. What about the others? So why do we have these as our favorites? and we're kind of losing the rest. We need to address all of them. Sometimes we need to finish up them. That is something that I do in my classroom in every, in every session. So when I go to the classroom, we have front seats and the oftentimes students who are not kind of 
involved in the classroom, I shift them to the front rows and try to give them voice in the classroom. Um, to develop a culture of respect among students and between students and teachers. So, as I said before, we come to the classroom with differences, and these differences oftentimes are seen as threats, as I said before. So, instead of seeing these differences as threats to our lives, to our comfort zones, but we need to appreciate these differences and see them just as differences and acknowledge them and appreciate them. And to advocate for all students. So I'm here for everybody. I'm not here for just my favorites. All right. So um, let's see some um, social justice um, project examples. So you might have to tell what I'm going to do for my own project. So you might organize a field trip with classmates or students. Which means, so you might visit some places, but you might, we have a lot of refugee students, and you might do something about the door of the students. In your practical side, you might organize something for these, uh, to kind of get some knowledge about these students. Or, you can organize community panel, organize community panels, so that means, for example, we're bothered about the issue of gender inequality, so you might invite somebody else who's well versed in this particular area, and this person can give a talk in the university. So if, for example, you're in, in, in the health department, you might have some flyers, you might have some brochures, you might contact some people, and then these people, these well versed people, will come, can come to your department and give a talk to your department. But it doesn't have to be the, just the department; it could be the whole university. Um. Um, you might invite another guest speakers to talk about something. So you might plan activities in which you to spend time interacting with people from um, neighborhoods who experience inequalities and injustices. So um, the basic purpose of kind of planning our project, social justice project, is where we plan to have them in our practical science, but sometimes. We might have limitations out there. So it could be the school, it could be the Ministry of Education, that might face some challenges. So they might not allow us to go to the classroom and do what we have in our minds. And that, that doesn't mean that we can stop. No. You can do something out of the classroom. So you can do something like this. You can plan something and like um, talking to interacting with people that have some kind of problems regarding social justice. And then you might go and interview with these people and you might get their own stories. So a lot of our um, students from our previous project, she did something similar. So she talked to people that she knew. Um, she gathered their stories, they were refugees, and they gathered, she gathered their stories and created a kind of story. And that is one that is one story book that I use in my classroom. Um, Organizing a clothing drive for a local massive violence shelter. Didn't we want to talk about that? Clothing. Organizing a clothing drive for a local massive violence shelter. Yeah. Okay, but not my specialty, but. Alright. I'm just saying because. Um, this, this is not that one. It was, um, it was a different one. You, you talked about my school's project, right? right? Yeah, this wasn't that. Okay. It was like when she invited, she was um, teaching. Turkish in New York, uh, but she participated in a project mm -hmm. where she went to a primary school and she talked about Turkey, she talked about deforestation, deforestation, oh. like, you know, like how like, you know, um, like, you know, the, the trees are cut in Turkey and etc. And like, yeah, she was a Turkish person in an American classroom oh, yeah. where like, all the kids were white, so mm -hmm. that, but that was that. This is, Oh, yeah. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, yeah, this is very, I mean, very straightforward as well, right? You can do a drive, like, you know, a food drive or a clothes drive, like, you know, you can collect, like, you know, mm -hmm. we have lots of, like, you know, clothes that we don't wear, or, like, you know, I have lots of, like, canned food in my cupboard that I never eat. Mm -hmm. um, so every year, she sure. says, yeah, my university does this drive, so you just, like, you know, go and donate these mm -hmm. things. And then you, yeah, and then you give them to the people who are in need. Right, right, thank you. 
Um, so, and we might use um, non certified adults and communities as a teacher, a teacher education, teaching perspective, teacher's culture of knowledge. So, um, I would refer back to um, our project in the previous um, um, volume of that project. So, uh, we have a student from the uh, University and she focused on intercultural competence with kindergarten students. So, she had two different kindergartens. And she focused on introducing cultures to these students. And she invited a native speaker from the United States into her classroom. And this native speaker gave some kind of presentation, did some activities about the grass culture to these kindergarten students. Um, so, um, bullying, which is a very serious issue in our, in our classroom. So, you might, you might have some like, um, LGBTQ students in our classroom, or we have some students um, but from a different language and they have problems with um, speaking Turkish, or we might have some students from different cultural backgrounds and they might have problems kind of adjusting to Turkish culture. So these students might be bullied by other students. And you might do something about that. In your classroom, you might organize something to raise awareness about that issue and then help deaf students who is bullied to be part of the classroom. Um, so um, you might write a children's book about injustice for local fifth grade students. That's possible. Well, um, again, in, in our previous project, one of our students wrote a book chapter about jobs. It's not some historical, but it's a book chapter. So he focused on the global goals of the United Nations. And he also focused on jobs and racism that is presented in the course of the textbooks. And he kind of tried to address this issue in his project. Um, and also investigating school based arrests. That is in Turkish context that could be problematic for you, but these are just kind of some ideas that we might focus on. And we will have two more webinars, and in these webinars we're going to cover different issues, and these, in these webinars you might, have, you might get some different ideas. And um, in the afternoon session, we have three people here, and they're going to present their particular ones, so these things can give you some ideas, please. Um, I just want to say something. Whatever like, you, know, you decide on doing, you should be in touch. So what we're going to do, I mean, we will talk about this in the afternoon as well, but what we'll do, again, this is from last year, is that we'll assign you a mentor teacher. So one of our graduates here will be your like, body mentor teacher, and they'll help you throughout the process. And you will be also, like, you know, supervised by one of us. Um, so, and that like, whatever you do, like, we'll be in touch with you throughout the process, and we'll help you, so you're not going to be on your own. Okay. So that like, it's up to you, like, because if you email us and if you ask us questions, we'll help. But if, if we never hear from you, we cannot help you, right? So, like, you should be, um, yeah, coming us with questions and <laughs> questions, and don't, don't be shy. So it's like the practical issue, right? We have a supervisor at the university, and then we have an editor at the practical school, and also have a senior. So it's kind of the same process. So we are not alone. In the previous project, project, our participants do not have a mentor. So we try to have a mentor. We have that kind of luxury right there. All right. So, do you want to have a question? So I have a project. I carried it out. And at the end, I would like to go to the United States, hopefully. But how are you going to determine who's going to attend the uh, conference, this whole conference in the United States? And there we go. So we have an evaluation rubric.
So basically, there are four different criteria that we're going to focus on when evaluating. But before moving on the criteria, so now for this project, we had a team of five people to evaluate the two best projects. It was me, Denise, and David, who's from the US Embassy, and I'm again from the US Embassy, and also the Commercial Language Specialist, who was a um, who's a mailer, and he was came to your university to give a presentation. Oh, it's not your university, but to talk on university and the other universities. So um, he or she will do the plenary and then workshop at the symposium as well. So it will be kind of five people, but this year we have seven as well. So most probably it's going to be like six people. Yes, yes, six people in total. So um, and we're going to use that program to select the two best projects. And regarding the selection process, we have five different criteria. First one is the completeness and then quality, impact and sustainability. This is very important. Creative and originality and presentation. So, um, and also we will use a 5 4 point micro scale to kind of select. And it's like from 1 to 4, it's so it means it does not, 1 means it does not meet expectations, and it goes on. And four means it exceeds the expectations. All right, so like, let's go through the steps. So in terms of completeness, we're going to focus on whether the project was carried out by completing all the necessary steps, and the final product, that is your project, is exceptional regarding the project expectations. So this is basically on the completeness of the project. In terms of quality, so we're going to focus on where the student, I mean that's you, present obvious evidence of time and invested end of learning. Alright? And the student shows an understanding of major points of social injustice and that is how it is done in practically in the classroom or outside the classroom. And also um, whether the resources are used efficiently. Regarding impact and sustainability, so our project should have a, a kind of impact that should be valid or that should exist in the long run as well. So it doesn't mean I'm done with my project and it's over. No, it should have some kind of impact in the long run. Right. So for example, if we focus on the story that was written by one of our participants in the first project, so she, she was done with the project, and now I'm using her product in my classrooms to teach language. In, I'm using the story in the reading class. So she had in total four different stories that were about the cases of the refugee women. And I'm using these stories not to just to teach reading skills or vocabulary, but I'm using it as also to raise awareness about the issues or challenges or problems that refugee women went through in their own culture and also in Turkey. And they are carrying out different activities around these stories. So your project should have some long-run um, impact. Does it make sense? Yes. Alright. And your project should also be creative and original. So it, it, we expect it not to be kind of cliché, not to kind of be something that has already been done. It doesn't mean it's something you could focus on something that is done, but it's important that you bring something new into that project. So it should be original and creative, and it should address something important in the community. And presentation. So once you are done with the project, then you're going to present that project at the symposium that will be held in Seoul University. So we will have the audience, and you will prepare your presentation about the project, and you will present the project there.
timeline. And I think that even as of now, you seem to be behind because we did webinar one, did you submit your blogs and lesson plans for webinar one? And then webinar two, lesson plans and blogs. And then, you know, the, yeah, that you have new deadlines for the social responsibility project. Webinar three is coming up, that's next week. So it's important that you set these deadlines because, you know, it, like for you to be awarded um, for international travel or domestic travel, you need to you need to have like you know, completed your like all your like you know, assignments, materials, whatever. So that's really important. Um, you don't need to like you know do your best in terms of your in terms of your like lesson plans and etc. We that's that's a learning process. We give you feedback and then you revise it and etc. So um, yeah, don't like this is not a class assignment that you're graded on, right? This is something that you're doing to, to learn. Um, yeah, I, I'll give you an example. Um, I'm teaching a research methods this semester, and I had a couple of like students who struggled a lot um, writing a proposal. One of them didn't write anything, so like no issue to you, no like you know methodology section, nothing. Like you know, he submitted nothing and he's failing. The other one submitted really really weak issue to you and methodology. But I didn't wait that because they were like two weeks and I said, okay, please last some feedback, go revise it, rewrite it, and then send it to me and I'll rewrite that, like, I'll read the, the second version. And then eventually like you know, he's getting a B and the other person is failing because he didn't even try. So you have to try. You just like you know submit something and then we'll give you feedback and then you can work on it and yeah, this is this is how you process. Yeah. Um, the other thing is like um, impact in in terms of teaching practices. So even if you you pick something that that's not, you, so this doesn't mean that you need to do a classroom teaching, or you need, you don't need to do lesson plans or material design. You can do something else, but think about the longer impact of it. Like you know, do I have a product at the end of this that I can use and be command to people or do I have nothing? Because it's last just year dumb. yeah last year one of our students did something like what was it called like curtain? Okay. Yeah. Oh uh, I curtain or curtain something like this. Anyway. So like she wrote lots of words and it was like and yeah, I don't know. It's very difficult to it's explain. Right. Yeah. So like it was kind of um it's a curtain kind of translation, <coughs> and there are letters yeah. stick to the curtain, and it was kind of um, hand over a platform, and when the sunlight comes through, they are reflected, the letters are reflected on the ground, and so people don't even look at the ground, they can read the letters, the, I mean, the words. Yeah, the and the words are like, you know, power, social justice, equality, and etc. So it's very really nice, like, you know, the idea, it's very, really, like, you know, Creative. nice and aesthetic, but that's it, that, you know, like it was there for a couple of days yes. and yeah, so what, like, you know, what are we going to do with this, like, you know, yeah, and she, she put lots of effort to it, so right. like, it wasn't, it wasn't a bad project, it's just like maybe if you do something like that, you need to like talk to the people on the street, like go and ask them, what do you think about this, why do you think this is here, and maybe record those and right. then like, show us something. Um, because you cannot bring that to the... So that's the other thing. Like we want you to bring something to show to everyone, display, at a symposium. And this year's symposium will be more crowded. Right. So like, you know, think about what can I take to the symposium as a product of this um, project. Exactly. And regarding that very project, for example, she did that curtain things. And, well, there, there was no recording or something. There were kind of some interviews with some people, but they weren't recorded. You have your blocks, so you can record, you can take some pictures, and then at the end, once you are done with your project, you can pile them, you can classify them, you can put them into an organization, and pass them onto your blog. So that when people visit our website, they will see the project, wow, somebody has done something like that. This is something that I have never thought about. So in, in, in terms of impact and sustainability, it should somehow have some impact.
Okay, so once the project is over, it should not then come down. So what do we have in the end? That's the question. For instance, we added the video and I showed it in my class this semester. Mm -hmm. um, and I think she will show us the, the video as well. And so do and, I. Uh, and uh, there are translations as well, and my students said we want to translate this, so they, they sent, we sent you the translation, yes. they sent it to Spanish, <coughs> they translated it to um, French and Chinese, and she has other subtitles as well. And it's something that like, she posted on YouTube, and anyone can use it. The expectations are high. <laughs> Thank you very much. Well, the first part was the core of the English study, you know, that, that information was crucial, but uh, then okay, we also have a timeline, you know, that we need to be aware of. Uh, it's really important for the success of the project, uh, the projects, that you go with the set time frame and timeline and dates, you know, it's really important, and I'm going to be talking about them now. Uh, there are five uh, steps that we are going to be completing with the, with the timeline. The, in, in the first one, uh, the first time that you need to be of is February 3rd, uh, where you are going to submit your topic, purpose, the law of your social responsibility project. You know, this, this could be a general idea that uh, you are going to be uh, discussing with your mental teachers and supervisors and looking at feedback and you can be around. You know, it's not like a uh, you know, one-time thing to do that that is done on the weekend and otherwise it uh, over the course of the period. You know. Even after probably after that time, uh, there might be cases where you uh, you will need to you modify your, your initial thinking. You know. that, that's fine because it, it's something that we have to kind of do, but at the same time you have to have a general idea as to what you are going to do and how. And uh, the second step here is submitting your budget and you are going to be getting uh, detailed information about this in the afternoon session. Uh, then we'll be talking about this. And uh, this is really important because the other part sometimes you know you are familiar somehow, you know, either as part of your course projects or other things that you've been doing throughout your education, you know a little bit about you know something the topic of purpose as such, but something about you know for us, you know, as a Quite well, even for us, it's, it's one of the trickiest part of project submissions. You know, but there are like people who are experts and specialized, specialized just on that, and we get the support uh, from time to time. So something your budget, and that includes you know all the financial stuff. You know, anything from uh, allocating uh, certain amount of money for yourself if if you think uh, if you deem it to be appropriate, or to spending. Uh, money to successfully execute your project. You know, this might include, depending on your, your project, this might include travel expenses or clothing material or paying for the either AFA or accommodation for a uh, invited speaker assembly. Depending on your project, this budget will be quite different. And then there's going to be a little bit of $500 if, if I'm right, right? That's $500. And we want to, uh, to go with that budget, you know, not, not to exceed it. And depending on the project, sometimes uh, $400 might be uh, too few, when I don't know, uh, $200 might be even a lot. You know, because it's just, you know, you don't have to finish it all, is what I'm saying, you know, depending on the project. If your project is okay with 100 bucks, just spend that 100 bucks, you don't have to. But you have up to 500 uh, limit. Uh, the third uh, step in the timeline would be something progress reports. Uh, in, that, in those progress progress reports are really important. You know that gives us uh, an idea about whether you'll be able to uh, complete it, complete the projects uh, according to the time time set and uh, with the initial you know thinking. Uh, Thought about in, in advance. And if there are things that we need to be doing, like change things uh, in, the, in the course of the plan, that's uh, where something is uh, very uh, progress report becomes really important. So, discussing what we have done, uh, sharing materials, uh, any kind of materials, 
related to your project would be uh, important at this stage. Next, uh, concluding your projects as something final project like documentation or product or deliverable. You know, uh, this is like an initial product stage and uh, the time for this would be mid-April. This is about uh, one month in advance of the uh, projects in book symposium. It's really important that uh, you, you have something at hand, like uh, a product, some kind of document, you know, some kind of deliverable that you can work with uh, so that you can have the you know, polished material or the outcome ready to present at the conference that is going to be on May 9 and 10. As Denis uh, just mentioned, uh, the symposium this year will be uh, a lot more crowded than last year. We can, uh, we we'll hopefully uh, give you more opportunities for interaction. interaction. Not only uh, it will be a venue, not only for you to present your, you know, uh, project, but also to get to learn from others' experiences and to get uh, to listen to maybe you know, workshops on the topic and uh, hopefully other presentations. Uh, some of the academy, you know. This presentation part is really, really important, and in a few minutes I'm going to be talking about the. Uh, the mechanics of presenting, you know, uh, sometimes you know it happens with your uh, study that you know at universities or sometimes where where you really put a lot of time and effort into something, but at the end of the day you come to present it, and it all depends on how the present presentation is going. You know, so it's really important that you have a well planned, carefully planned presentation on stage where you can convey your project uh, to other people because you know sometimes it's really easy for us to take things for granted because we know our project, you know, we've been like sleeping in that, so we've been discussing it for hours of the other day, you know. Uh, but others have no idea about uh, what it is about, you know, how it started, you know, uh, what the process was like for you and how you ended up, uh, where you ended up, you know, so all those things need to be clarified during the presentation stage. And uh, well, I'll, you know, I, I'll be talking about it in a few minutes and I said, but you know, it's really important that uh, you are really ready for that presentation because the time will be limited. It's not like a, a course presentation where the teacher won't stop you. You know, you have limited time. The limited time that we have will be able to provide as much uh, details as possible for people to get what you have done uh, for the success of the project, this is really important, you know, because uh, people will be there uh, to learn about your projects. And, uh, all you have done, all you have done throughout the months, you know, <laughs> during the project, uh, won't mean much maybe if uh, the presentation itself is not good. So, uh, yeah, I, can I say so last year, around right, with this project, I was one student that we constantly pushed, like, you know, always late in asylums, always, like, you know, and, like, you know, project-wise, um, like, what are we going to do? This project is not related to social justice. How do we make it related? So, like, you know, we, we, like, we suffered, though, <laughs> especially, you know. And, and on the day he came, like said, the symposium, he gave one presentation. Everybody was like, oh my god, such a great presentation, such a great project, good job, awesome. And we were like, <laughs> like what happened? So that you know, project presentation is the part that you sell it to people. Like this is your chance to to go to the States, right? Like so whatever you do, um, doesn't matter. Like it matters maybe for, yeah. to us or like you know, but you know there will be other people who will be evaluating you and who will like see your presentation or project for the first time. So like the presentation is really important. That's the color of the book, you know, by the way, I'm going to you know, okay. you know uh, like uh, I was part of the project uh, uh, not last year, so you know, that was really true, you know. Uh, that selling part. I was there and that presentation they're talking about now. Uh, if I were to rank you know, presentations of projects, it, it won't be maybe one of the first, you know, 
all probably did something in the middle, but you know, they know that in the process, the, if you look at the process, it wasn't anything like the other ones. See, so it's really important to sell the pro uh, project as well because uh, otherwise you know, your product might be really good, but if you can't sell it, you know, it doesn't yeah. mean much. So, yeah. yeah, for example, even I couldn't buy my own product because of my presentation. <laughs> Okay. 
the fact that you you feel uh, you know stressed out and you're like you know I can't do it you know I'll just you know stop. Uh, it helps them to see the timeline in front of you and see how much progress you have made. They are motivated. So put the steps uh, down with the dates and with each step that we are going to be doing. And throughout each phase, wait for the feedback before you move on to the next phase. You know, it's really important. With the budgeting, again, I'm not going to talk about it uh, a lot, uh, but just with a few sentences I will out of the because then it will be giving you detailed information about this. Uh, we want to, and I'm going to show you the format in a few, uh, you're, you're going to prepare a table for your budget, and below that table, um, you know, you'll have all those items that you'll be needing, all those, you know, uh, things that you need to spend money on, uh, and uh, this Excel sheet that we'll be providing you will be proof of your payments, so you'll, rec you'll receive more information about the payment budget. So, please wait for the afternoon session. Progress reports. Um, what are progress reports and what do we mean by this? Uh, again, this is a description, of, uh, a description in one of the paragraphs about, about what you've done so far. You know, what were some of the challenges, challenges that you experienced and what was shocking to you, uh, what you were happy about, what you wanted to do that you couldn't do, and what you thought the reasons were, and how it could be different if you were to start the same project uh, from scratch once again, you know, from, from the start. Uh, all those things are really important. So basically we expect you, you know, as a teacher can, as you already know the term, we want you to be reflective about the, uh, about the uh, process, you know. Just keep asking yourself questions, you know, constantly evaluate your progress and uh, that will be really helpful in, in the completion, the for completion, the for successful completion of the project. Final document here, what do you mean by the final document is that uh, you are going to be following the steps uh, one through four, and at the end you have to write a reflection on what you have learned from this process. If you think you have achieved your objectives, anything else you would like us to know about your project, and uh, this final, you know, this. Uh, Final document will be also uh, related to the product of the rule of your, of your project. It's like a reflection paper that you write at, at the end, you know, about your product. Now, uh, let's move on to the uh, important, very important. I, 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 we have discussed it before, you know, with the think. Uh, this presentation stage, I would think, is one of the best you uh, showcase your product. It's very, you know, in one way it's leading, in another way it's very inspiring, in another way, you know. I mean, it's, it makes you happy. I'm sure uh, <coughs> uh, the three participants from last year's project uh, will uh, concur uh, with, with this. You know, it's where you feel proud. So, of course, you have to be, you have to have something to proud of, uh, but also you have to present it in a, in a uh, good way that others, you know, will understand it and will applaud. You know, so presentation is important. Uh, first, mechanical things about the presentation: you each have twenty minutes. Twenty minutes, twenty minutes is not much. You know this. You know, sometimes in, in, in smaller. Uh, things that you present in your courses sometimes takes, I don't know, hours, you know. You hardly limit yourself to a 20 minute or 25, 30 minute period, but here you have to have uh, 20 minutes to present your projects and 10 minutes for the question and answer session. Again, it's not kind of slow. Sometimes some people get more questions than others. Some projects are prone to more questions. Maybe if you are not, I mean, by the way, that you get more question doesn't always mean that you haven't clarified things uh, better. Sometimes your project is really interesting that you have a lot of questions to ask. Other times, uh, you know, it's not interesting, interesting at all. They, they, they ask me yes. So, but there will be questions. Uh, we have no way of, probably, you know, uh, equalizing the time or just kind of you know, making sure that each, each and every one of you will get the same amount of questions, same amount of time to answer these questions, but all of you will get some questions from the jury members, from the audience, and we 
began to play, prepare for those questions as well. In the 20 minutes of your time, you have to clarify things uh, and make things really easy to understand for, for the audience. What you can do as part of this presentation, you can prepare a talk for the presentation. Uh, in a moment, I'm going to talk in, uh, about it, but uh, we want to, to avoid something. You know, there are times where people are giving 20 minutes and they show a video for 15 minutes and they have 25 minutes to talk. You know? So we want to, you can use materials like pictures to show, videos to show, or I do not refer to some things, maybe uh, hand people ask certain things, maybe you know, distribute flyers, I don't know. Either your tiny products or things that, that have to do with your product, you can just deliver them, but as you deliver them, you have to be you know, uh, presenting, still presenting, and you have to be active with them. You want to active presence on the stage. And so, a couple of reminders about, about these presentations that you are going to be giving. As we mentioned before, your presentations should have an introduction. What's an introduction? You know, even with uh, presentations at school, sometimes people come and just start talking about the content. You know, who are you? Where are you? You know, um, uh, why are you interested in social justice issues? Or why are you part of this project? How did you end up, uh, end up at the stage? You know, all these are really important and give the audience uh, something uh, to start with. To start with. So, maybe an introduction for yourself. Talk, talk about your interest and make it fun. Make it fun. How can you make it fun? You know, uh, you can probably include, of course, not a stand up comedy, but you know, you, you can include jokes, you can include, you know, you know when it's too official, when the content, you know, is like you're reading from, from the book secret, you know, it's, it gets boring. So make it uh, easy to follow, make it interesting for the, for the audience. Uh, and start with your start with your It's really important. This is how you feel in this study. And continue with the relation of your project. Why you decided on this topic with the participants you selected or the uh, context that you have. Maybe why is it that specific school? Why is it that specific community? You know, uh, why is it this and not that? You know, these are really important. Uh, Participant selection, context selection, topic selection. So give the rationale for this. Um, you can, by the way, if it's a PowerPoint presentation, you can have different sections, sections for this. But sometimes we see cases where people put introduction, but there's no introducing there. And other times you don't have a title, a formal title that says introduction, but you are you can well introduce it all. You know. So it's really important. That you do what these titles you have. So it's not only that we have the formal uh, written form in your presentation. So provide this introduction, give the relation for the project, and continue with your objectives. You know, what were your ultimate goals? What were you trying to achieve with, with these with these with the steps, specific steps that you followed in your project? What were the aims? What, what were you trying to attain? You know, these are really important and that gives members and audience, you know, a baseline for evaluating the project. What were you trying to do and uh, what did you end up with, you know, uh, the day match, etc. So the process, this is really important. I actually, in the presentations, I really like, I really like this part, you know. What was the process like? Make it personal. Make it personal. I mean, where were there times that you cried, you know, very desperate from time to time, you know. Uh, last year, for instance, there were presentations where people talked about uh, you know, how things were with, with that process, how you had they ended up calling, you know, Dennis Oja, Martin Oja, in the middle of the night, you know, crying, asking for help, or, you know, there were times maybe they were trying to uh, catch a bus for a while, going to another, or they were really busy with their, you know, school assignments or preparing for tests, and uh, all that, and at the same time, they were uh, trying to do something with it. These are the and uh, I uh, again uh, I think this, this part is very important to make an impact on the audience. So make it personal, talk about the process and not the formal parts only, you know, here is what I did first, next, etc. But your feelings, you know, or the approach of the community or attitude 
of people towards you as you were carrying them? How, how did they uh, see you? Or maybe it was a school where you did something. How did the school principal uh, think about it? How did the uh, students feel? Were they happy? Did they find it interesting? I don't know, these are really important. Talk about this. And the end result, the end result of the product. You know, it's the general term, but depending on the type of project that you'll be carrying out uh, here, the product might be too different. You know, sometimes it's something that you can put your hand on, or you want it to, you know, to, be, to be something uh, concrete, you know. But it's not always that way, you know. Sometimes you, there's this book as part of the project, but other times maybe uh, it's an impact that you did, but still there should be a product. A product might change. I mean, depending on maybe I don't know. Maybe some examples about products. Right. Um, so I was just going to mention something regarding comparisons and the product. For example, you might do some in classroom teaching about social justice. It is important that you take copies of the material, and sometimes you might have photos of the students. But of course, it should be allowed. So I mean, students and parents should be allowed to take some pictures. So you can do some recordings. So these will be your materials or your product to present at the end. For example, um, Rayhan's project. So she did a seven-week teaching, and then she had these lesson plans, the activities, and some um, photos taken from the classroom. And she brought all of them to the symposium to present as her material or end project. So sometimes picture, sometimes picture, other times you know, booklets, uh, uh, interviews. Uh,
book that you need to show, let's show you a few pages and move on. You don't have to show, you know, each and every page of it to 12 the book. The 12 page book. Maybe some kind of visuals, if you think about a story, you show some visuals from the story. The title, the content, that would be enough. And use the time efficient, don't wait for, for whatever that you're showing. Uh, is complete. You know, if it's uh, again, if it's something that people can look at as you present, just do it. Say, okay, as I thought, you can uh, look at this and give, give them the worksheets or whatever that they have. But don't wait for them uh, all to finish looking uh, before you can continue. You know, because you have limited time as important. You can include photos and videos for, from the preparation stage of the project. That's, that's something interesting, you know, make things uh, more relevant for the audience. But again, you know, use this uh, sporadic and um, as needed, you know, sometimes too much, you know, don't turn your presentation into showcasing, you know, materials, you know. If you look at this also, that here is the, you know, not that, but uh, show something. It's like a presentation, you know, I don't know if you don't want to you know, put some images on certain slides, but not all slides. That's really important. Include as many materials as you can from what the students are engaging or preparing in the class. That's, that's really important. It's not only what you did, but what other people did as part of the project. We have, they were given chances of opportunities, you know, students, communities. So how did they take this opportunity? How did they use it? You know, uh, how, did, uh, how did they turn it to a product? You know, did they draw something, take notes, or, you know, did something, show what they did. Show what they did. Yeah, actually did um, something really nice last year. She, yes. uh, do you want to talk about what? Um, the bringing your pricing. You brought my pricing. Yeah, yes. Very good. I brought my pricing to the symposium. Thank you. 
should be the standard products. Sometimes uh, the, the amount of times when you need to uh, showcase the amount of times people might ask you about them, you know, uh, just for clarification. It's like, you know, if you did interviews, uh, they might ask you about your interview questions. I don't know, like, maybe a very story, like, a, uh, written up uh, and ready to be presented. Uh, make sure that um, you're ready uh, during the presentation with your, you know, hard drives or flash drives or CDs and stuff like that. Pictures, make uh, multiple copies, for instance. Maybe uh, make sure that they are also in your email, but they are also in the drive. And there are times when you come to a presentation, it probably happened to us all during some stages of our lives where you, uh, you know, go somewhere to present and your copy is cracked or you, you lose it somewhere or you forget it in the past or whatever. Make sure you have multiple copies of everything in your digital save or you know, print out, etc. Also, um, again, something I'm going to mention, uh, you can get support from us for this uh, or we can probably use the budget that you have. Uh, Consider that there will be at least 50 people there and make copies of things that you are going to show to people. You don't have to have 50 copies, you a copy for everything, uh, for everyone. Sometimes you, maybe 10 copies might be good, uh, 5 people can look at it together. Or if it's a book for us, you don't have to get 50 books, maybe one book is good, good enough, or maybe two print books would be enough. And you know, people can look at it. But other times, it is something that people need to, uh, you know, look at or read through or, you know, just uh, grasp on or just take notes on. Make sure that people have their individual copies, like uh, 50 copies would do it properly, right? Um, yeah. The other thing is that we'll have um, tables that you can display your things. I mean, have lots of copy wording and etc. So we can, like, you know, put your copies, booklets, whatever, on those tables and I'll just display them during copy time. Right. Or, or also depending again, depending on the project, there are a lot of things that we might not even think about right now. So you don't know what kind of projects you, you yeah. do be producing. Now, if it's a, if it's something that maybe last year, like a video that Lila uh, had, maybe uh, if uh, things are possible, I don't, I don't know, uh, you can bring us a copy and we can uh, we can have it, you know, played somewhere. I don't know outside in the hall. I don't know if it's picture you can probably hang on the walls of the uh, conference rooms etc for people to look at during the you know sessions etc you know we can we can we can do it so uh, there are the times where you need to be informing us or asking for support or feedback uh, about specific things that we might not have thought about you know because your projects are unique and there are there might be things that we have never thought about you know, that you that we think you, you might need to say. If you have an idea that we didn't mention, we think yeah. that you know, we didn't think of, well, just tell us, um, you know, is this possible, can we do this? And then yeah. you know, we'll, we'll try to get it. Like, we we'll take things uh, for granted. Like, for us, there's a conference venue, but maybe you'll invite someone to the stage, maybe a participant, and you need, like, a Jaka uh, microphone or whatever, you know, I don't know, ask in advance, just to be sure, you know, like, oh, I'll need that, uh, can you make sure that it's there, you know, or I'll need to make copies of this, or I'll uh, do this, you know, if there are surprising things or shocking things that you might do, right? and if you know about the process, we'll be, we'll be able to help you out. Uh, some things, again, uh, you already mentioned them, so I'll go quickly, but I'll do this. Uh, there is a rubric. We will provide that will be used by the jury members to evaluate your projects to the best frameworks for the teaching of the conference in the United States. We will have our respect to organizing cases uh, in, in the case where the two parts, participants can make it to the States. And the names won't be shared with you, John, until someone drops out. So we will be selecting half of the project will be selected basically for this two, uh, I said, <laughs> two years, right? And uh, if the two selected project owners can't make it for any reason to the United States, the alternates will replace them. But uh, you won't know whether you know the alternates until you know the chance is there you know, for you. Uh, besides this, uh, hard copies that we mentioned before that you can uh, distribute.
the support of the founder of the project, the like USN, I said you, you, you want us to submit them uh, yeah. for that for other thing. It's not only like, you know, you have done the project, you present it, okay, see you later, you know. You have to submit a lot of uh, you know, those things, products, uh, and all those forms that you have, things uh, that you created as part of your project to the project team so they can be organized and submit it to the Country. And also, please make sure you address the state's mention in background information on SRP is also attached to the email. I think that's uh, it's one email. It's one email. But what we'll do uh, is that we can, we can move on to the next slide. So, this is the slide that we have uh,
everything is easier for us and for you as well. If you don't do it properly, then we keep calling you and you know ask for the receipts and materials and go over and change your Excel sheet and you know and we send you money and we send it back. It's it's chaos. So it's chaotic for both you and and like us exactly. Yeah. Okay. Um. So as Sarah mentioned, you have up to five hundred dollars. And five hundred dollars in Turkey is a lot of money. Um, I think last year maximum you got two point seven or five. Okay, and you're mm, you I think you already buy maybe five years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And do you remember how much? Um, just probably around. Yeah. Um, the thing is, you know, I'll talk about this in a little bit, but um. Plan your budget wisely. Um, this is we're not, we don't send you five hundred dollars all at once. You tell us, you know, this is like the one number you need, and we like I'll, I'll talk about it a little bit. But the thing is, like, if we don't spend this money, we can spend it on something else. Um, we can send maybe more people to the states instead of two people. We can send. Go ahead. So last year we selected two people and then we selected two alternates and then we looked at our budget and we had enough money to send two other people. So we're actually sending four people. So this is good. And um, yeah. So I'm not saying um, spend less than you need, um, take as much money as you need, but just like you know, plan carefully. Um, so how to do the budget? So this is what we're going to do. You don't need to go into your computers yet, but we'll post an Excel sheet. This is the Excel sheet um, that you will see. I added some numbers here just to give an example, but the, uh, the Excel sheet that we have in Google Drive doesn't have the numbers. It's uh, it's blank. Um, so what um, I'll um, go through here. This is what you're going to complete to, to request them. This is what we are talking to when we ask money from the MC. We say, you know, we need this much for transportation, we need this much for materials, compensation, and etc. So I'll walk you through the items here. Um, we listed three categories here transportation, materials, and compensation. But if you have a different category, you can have different categories here. Um, I don't know what um, else you might need. Maybe in Iran, it's like they were meeting at a cafe, so like you know, they had food related expenses. So then in that case, you can add um, food here. Um, yeah, we have like others. So you can either put down other, other or like, create a different category. So the, the first category you have, because whatever you do, you need to go from one place to other. Um, if you are teaching at the school, you take whatever like you know, the bus, the um, etc. etc. Or if you are taking with the cab, um, you, you write that. So the example that we have here, bus to Istanbul, round trip, so you know, uh, one ticket, just like we're going, I think this was uh, from Koje to Istanbul, so it's, oops, um, so it's 35, 75, these are in Turkish era. And how many units? So how many units means um, how many times or did you purchase this ticket? How many of that? So if you have, for instance, five students, and if your ticket is um, 35 to 5, you put five here, and then you calculate the total amount. Okay. Um, this is transportation. So items here. Um, <laughs> Stay away. Uh, was it laser gear? No. Okay, anyways. Um, so you write the number of items for each category, and then you write in the uh, number of receipts. So every receipt that you have, I'll go over this, but for us to make you money and to look legit, um, we need the receipts for everything. If there is an expense that you will make um, that won't have a receipt, we 
we need to talk about this. There are ways to, you know, um, to sort it out. Um, but other than those exceptions, everything has to have receipts. So um, when you say these receipts, you, you don't need to bring us the originals. You can just like scan them and put them into your Google Drive. Um, so your folders will open, I don't know, maybe it's over there, it will open a folder for your uh, social responsibility project expenses and you need to upload everything in those folders. We make the payments. Um, yeah, like, anyhow, I'll, I'll, yeah, I'll talk about that later. Um, so, and then once we upload your receipts, you need to give them, and you need to number them according to the, the number that they appear here on the list, and you need to write the explanation as well. So, like, let's say you have the, the bus ticket, um, so the bus ticket, the receipt should appear like one bus ticket to Istanbul. And then the same information should be here. So if I look at the, the, the Excel sheet and look into your folder, they should match. Um, here's what happened last year. Uh, one bus to Istanbul, and then we look into the folder. Fotrabir. <laughs> okay. So Fotrabir doesn't mean, because you have like at least 10, 15 of these. So I need to go through every, like, you know, receipt that you have and make sure, huh, okay, this is what they might get. Just give an example. For example, one of our participants on the first project should have like 30 different receipts and they were randomly named and we had trouble to which is what. So because they have to report back then is that this amount was used for that particular purpose. But when we go through the budget, it, it writes something different here, and the name of the receipt is something different. And when I go through the receipt, even I read it, I do not understand what, it, what the money is spent on. So the name of the receipt and with the different budget should match, so that you can, for you and for us, you kind of get an idea of what the money is spent on. Um, the other thing, so what you do for each category, or within each category, you write the receipt. You write the explanation, you write the unit price, um, the units, and for each receipt you write the total amount, and then you need to calculate the total for this particular category. Your Excel sheet is designed in such a way that it's, it will automatically calculate the total um, for every category, but we need to be careful if you write 7215TN next to it, that is no longer a number. So it won't calculate. So just put the numbers. You don't write TI or anything else. Okay? Don't put anything in the <coughs> The other important thing is um, don't round up your receipts. Okay? So if it says um, $15.99, it should appear as $15.99, not as $16. Okay? That is important because they, they match. I cannot explain to the embassy what it says. <laughs> Um, 
took share for for my work. Um, again, be careful because you cannot, yes, it shouldn't exceed 25% of your social support. You can also provide compensation for your um, contributors. Okay? So these are the people who help you during the process. Um, I think the government firms, like, you know, do you like it? About like 20 people. 20 people. Yeah, so, you know, um, the, the actors, the yeah, directors, the editor, and the, the, the crew, mm -hmm. the crew. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Um, wow, it was a discussion. <laughs> 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 so, you can, you know, because these people are helping you, and we cannot take our hands, it, but we can, you know, um, still, like, provide some, um, some money for the year help at that time. Um, then again, cannot exceed 25% of the budget. So that's like the other $125 for everyone involved in the project. Um, and I'll tell you how to do these things because for the, the, the salary that you have for yourself, you don't have a receipt. And also for the compensation you provide for your um, contributors, you don't have a receipt. But we'll, give you to some of sheets so that you will sign it like between you and contributors and between you and like, you know, the project team so that we need to like document every expense that you make. Um, how about your participants? The people involved in the project, your students, you cannot give them money. Um, you cannot compensate them, but you can buy books, crayons, pens, um, that stationery as gifts. Okay. But just like, just be careful that you can't buy an um, iPad or anything like that. Just very small, like this, token of appreciation. Um, but yeah, you cannot give that any money. Um, so when you make a payment to a contributor, that's like the people who help you, you'll be using appendix two. That's the two sheet. Um, these are posted in the Google Drive with the correct names. So what you do, you write your name, you write the, the, the person you are paying, and you write the total amount that you give to this person, and you sign it, they sign it, and then you scan it, you, you put it in your Google Drive. So this, this functions as your receipt. So this is something that we can give to the end receipt. Because otherwise, if you give, if I give such a like, you know, hundred lira, maybe I can give it. Like I, I have to have proof that you make these payments. Because we, yeah, we are liable. Um, the other appendix is appendix three, and it's the one that you um, would be um, completing um, for your compensation. So that needs to be signed by you and by us. for those from this place to the other far side. 
the AN number to, to make the things. So just add the number uh, onto the Excel sheet as well, so it's in, in that space I know where to find it. So I think last year you emailed and yeah, um, or you put it on the Excel sheet. Ivan. 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 Um, what else? Okay. So, yeah, if you need to take a phone push, and if there's no receipt, you need to turn that form. Um, you need to send us, so at the end of your project, um, we will know how much we sent you, and we will know how much you spent. If there is a discrepancy, if you spent more than what you asked for, we will, you know, send you additional money. If you ask for uh, more than you needed, you will send us back the money. Okay? That's how it works. Um, your budget information is confidential. Uh, you, you are not supposed to share it with anybody else. So, like, you know, what you have um, received from your, um, for your uh, budget is only between the, the project team and you. Um, so when you request your money, we might actually send you um, your funding in two or three installments. It actually depends on what you ask for. So if you ask uh, money for, um, as I said, you know, transportation, books, and etc., then we send it right away. But for compensation, we only send you the compensation once the project is complete. So you complete your, or oh, if you need to make an urgent payment, we're not too strict about this. Like we, we sign them right away. <coughs> but the like, you need to know that your spending is like in a wise way and, um, and yeah, that you really need. <coughs> um, your budget is subject to our approval. Uh, we'll work on your budget as well, just to give you a sense of like, you know, what budgeting looks like or what kind of like you know items that you might need in your project. So it's not by no means like you no know, final. Um, but once you so you know Saratujo went over the timeline, we have deadlines for you. Once you start with your budget, we need to approve it. So don't make any payments or don't like don't spend any money for your project before you get a car approval. Just, just make sure that we approve it and that we can start spending. Yeah. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. Um, this is what I was talking about. So what's wrong with this uh, kind of, this is how this person saved their lives. Is it one of you guys? <laughs> so what's wrong? So let's say these are your receipts and you save them into your Google Drive. Is it okay to save them like this? It's too small. So it's Fotura 1, Fotura 2, Fotura 3, Fotura 4 dash, Fotura 5 for Tati, Fotura 2 for Kitab, Fotura 7. What is it? Is this how you are, you are going to save your um, receipts? So how, how are you going to fix this? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, that's it. Okay, why don't you go uh, into your Google Drive and correct the ones that um, I posted? <coughs> you don't have. Okay, that's fine. If you don't have a computer, just work with your um, friend.
Thank you. 